Okay, welcome everyone to this uh, lecture. So in this lecture, we're going to be taking a look at navigation with our tile map layer. So first, we're going to do a full on uh, kind of walkthrough here. So I'll do my best to add the explanations as we go. Uh, but do keep in mind that there's going to be quite a bit of um, explanations, I'll say, or sorry, to like kind of copying and just showing you how to do stuff. So first, I'm going to have a tile map layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, well, I'm going to create the tile set. So here, I'll go into the tile set, add in my tile set that I want. And here is my tile set. Now, for this example, essentially, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make the ground because the tile map layer now allows us to layer things as nodes instead. So here, uh, I will draw using the grass. So I can make one layer called grass. I can save and I can duplicate this node and I'll go to the tile set and I'll make it unique. Go to into this tile set and now I'm going to draw the ground. I'll draw just like whatever. I don't need a uh, auto tiling right now, so it doesn't really matter. But here is my walkthrough, let's say. Now, here's my goal. OK, so right now we're about a minute in and here's my goal, my objective. I want my mouse or sorry, my uh, little character here to move. Uh, along the or towards my mouse, right? So when I hit play, I want it to move towards my mouse, whether I click or not. It, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to have it automatically always move to my mouse, right? However, I don't want it to touch the grass. I only want it to navigate along this path. Now to do this, it's actually not too difficult. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this dirt. And on the dirt, I'm going to go to the navigation layer. Add element, and now we can go to tile set, paint, and go over here to navigation layer, and I will paint on the place I want it to walk. Now, obviously, you would do maybe like all of these and all of these and kind of do it specifically or whatever. Um, I'm just going to do this one or this block specifically because that's the one I'm using. Now, here's the way the navigation works. Essentially, Godot will look for anything with this uh, layer, right? If there is this navigation layer on the map, then it will say, OK, I can walk on that. Now, if there isn't anything of that navigation layer on our game, it'll say I can't walk there. Now, the cool part about this is if I go to debug and I turn on visible navigation, I should be able to hit play and you will see the navigation area. So this is essentially where I can walk or can and can't walk. All right. Now let's take a look at the actual navigation. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a navigation agent 2D. I'm going to create. And inside this guy, there's quite a few settings we want to change. So keep uh, try to keep up. So the first thing we'll do actually is I'm going to connect a, uh, let's say, player. Or actually, uh, let's recall, I'll make this unit. And I'll add a script here. And I'm going to do the node default. And I'll put this in my scripts folder. I'll hit create. And now what I need to do is go to my navigation agent, and I'm just going to connect the velocity computed into that script. All right. Now in my navigation agent in the inspector tab, I uh, do make sure that you see all the properties. Here we go. I'm going to change a few things. The first thing we're going to change is the actual pathfinding. Here I'm going to change the desired distance to five, the target distance to five, and this guy to edge centered. Now, you can kind of play around with these, and it's a little, I won't say hard to explain, but it's a little easier to understand if you just kind of look at the difference. Uh, the essential difference here specifically is we're just going to compute things a little quicker than trying to go from like, let's say from here all the way to here. Like if I wanted my player to move from here to here, I could go from here to here to here, right? Two points essentially. But this will allow me to create several points along a longer line, right? And the way we'll visualize this is actually quite cool, because if we go into the debug here, we can actually enable this, use custom, and I'm going to turn this to red or black or whatever you'd like. Obviously, I'm going to do red. This will allow us to visualize the line that this guy is actually walking on. So it will show the line it's actually walking. Now, for the avoidance, we'll just turn this on and that's it. Those are all the settings we need for this guy. And now we can actually take a look at some of the code. So inside of our unit, let's pop this code out. We first need to load the uh, 
let's actually close this. I need to load the navigation agent. So let me drag it in. I'll hit control and drop it. And it now loads that in. Now what I can do is I can uh, start adding things into my process function. However, I want this to actually be a physics process function. So let me just delete all that and I'll type in physics process. Next, uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to start copying a little bit of code as there's quite a bit, but I'll go one line or two lines at a time. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our mouse position. And we can do that quite easily by just getting, uh, saying variable mouse position is equal to global mouse position. Next, we're going to set the navigation agent target position to the mouse position. Right? This is kind of self-explanatory. It essentially tells our navigation agent that, hey, I want the target position to be equal to my mouse, where my mouse is, right? Now, if you wanted to do this as a point and click, you'll kind of have to figure that out in, in terms of input. And so I'll let you kind of think about that. Next, what I'll do is I'm going to get the current navigation position and make it equal to my global position. Now, this is the same as saying self.global position, right? But I'm just going to say global position. Now, I'm going to compute the next path along the position that I need to go to, from my current position to the next path position, right? So essentially, this is a built in function that will just get the next path for us. So we don't actually have to do anything too complicated. This will just do it for us. Next, we'll get the new velocity. And we're going to get the current agent position, right? so our, our self. And we kind of looked at this in a previous lecture, right, where we're going to get the direction towards the next position. And then we're just going to multiply it by movement speed, which uh, we'll make in a second. So at the top, let's create a movement speed of 50, all right, or whatever number you want, of course. All right, next, we need to uh, check to see if the enable, uh, what is it called? Avoidance is enabled. If it is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the velocity equal to the new velocity. Now, if it's not enabled, what we can do is say, uh, we'll use this built, this guy, the signal, and call the new velocity inside of that. Now inside of this guy, it's actually not too hard, we'll just say velocity is equal to safe velocity. All right. Now we're almost done. All we need to do to make this work because we're using velocity, we need to move and slide. Now this is kind of all we need. But there is one more small issue, which is once the navigation is finished, I want to return, I want to kind of finish the navigation. Now this is specifically more applicable to when you actually implement or if you implement a point and click. So if I point and click on a map, I want my position, my character to move towards that position. And we'll do that by saying, if the navigation agent is finished, this is a built-in function inside of the navigation agent, then we'll simply return. Now, in this case, you could do other things, right? This is where you would, well, do other things. So this is kind of, I'll kind of add a comment here. The navigation has ended and yeah, I'll just say navigation has ended, right? So it's achieved the last point in the navigation path. Now, if I close the game and I hit play, we can test this, see if it works. Okay, cool. So it does work. It looks like it works nicely. And you can see here that it's going by several points and we're just going one point at a time. And it looks so smooth and it's switching up very quickly because it's in the physics process function, right? So that is very clean. Now, the question is kind of on top of this, right? Well, what if I have several layers of this, right? What the question is, what if I have another layer, right? I'll duplicate this. And let's say I have a layer of trees, right? Let's say you set up an auto tiling with these trees and you want to, you know, make it so that it doesn't go on these guys. So let's say I put this guy, or sorry, I'll put this guy right here, right? This is a kind of collision, right? Now, if I hit play, you'll see that I can still go on top of that tree, which I don't want, right? I want to be able to go around this tree. Right. So the question is, what do I do? Well, uh, first of all, what we can do here, because I duplicated this, you can see if I hide the dirt, we still have this tile set. So I'm just going to delete all this from the trees. Right. So if I hide and show these, you'll see kind of what's on what layer. So it's a little tricky to keep track of this, but do keep in mind that is how it works. Right. So, OK, just to test this one more time, we can maybe put a path right there like that. And we can hit play and see I can still go on those trees, right? So that yeah, the, so the question is, well, what do I do? Well, 
Let me just move that. Yoink. That was my cheat sheet a little bit. So let's uh, add a, a script to our trees. Uh, or sorry, not our trees, actually. Let's remove that. We're going to add it to our dirt here. And I'll add this into my scripts. Open and create. Now, inside of this script, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to load my trees node. And whatever node that you want to essentially uh, make sure that this is not uh, on the navigation, right? So if you have a collision, quote unquote, that you don't want to collide with, this is how you can load it in. Now, let's take a look at what we'll do. First, what we're going to do is we're going to use two built in functions that are automatically called in the tile map layer. The first one is called use uh, tile data runtime update. So this updates automatically. Next, we're going to check to see if the coordinates of this tile map is in the trees of the dot get use cell by ID. Now, ID, if you don't know, is the ID of the tile set. If you go into the tile set, well, it doesn't show here, but if I go to the setup, you'll see the ID here is zero. Now, if you added another one, you can see here that automatically it'll say two. So do keep in mind that the ID does matter, right? All right, so now back to the dirt. So here we can see that the trees are using the cell ID zero. Now, if it is, we'll return true here. Let me just pop this out. Now, we don't need an else statement. We'll just say return false otherwise, okay? Next, what we'll do is we're going to call this big function uh, tile data runtime update with the coordinates and the tile map data, so or the tile data itself. So this is going to allow us to check each tile itself. So what do we do with this? Well, we need to check to see the same thing as we just did above. We need to see if the coordinates are in the get used data of our tree. This is essentially checking, are we using a tile or a coordinate from the tile set of our trees? right, or the tile map of our trees. Now, if we are, this is the problem. This is where I want to set the navigation essentially to false. I, I want to make it disappear. And it's actually not that hard to do. All I need to do here is say tile data dot set navigation polygon zero to null. Now, the reason this works is because the navigation itself is already in this node, right? The navigation is inside of this dirt. And essentially what this will do is it will take the coordinates of, let's say, this guy right here, and it's telling us it. We know that there is a navigation tile right there, but we know also that there's a tree tile on top of that tile. So what we can do is we can just set the navigation polygon of that layer, which is zero um, automatically, uh, to null. And null is just nothing, right? So if you recall from before, if there's no navigation a collision thing there, then it's going to, the computer will tell us, okay, well, I can't navigate there. So now let's try this. Let's hit play. And now you can see that it has removed these tiles. I can no longer, well, I mean, he, the player is still kind of going between, but uh, you can see that I can't go over here to the bottom left, right? And that is perfect. That is exactly what we wanted. So now it won't go on top of the trees, depending on what sort of thing I have, right? And of course, additionally, let's say in your trees here, you added a physics layer. So let's go here to physics layer and add a physics layer inside of our tree. And because our unit is a collision, has a collision shape, I should be able to now collide with the trees. Oh, it looks like I broke something. Uh, let's go back here. Oh, that's the navigation. So, okay. So I just made a big whoopsie there. Let's remove that and go to the physics layer and add that there and hit play one more time. Now you should be able to see that I can collide with the trees. Kind of. It's a little hard to see, but he is kind of colliding with the trees. Uh, just to kind of do this a little more, I can kind of increase his collision and see if he touches them. All right, I do think it is working, but it's a little hard to see. All right, so, but that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial or this lecture. I hope to see you guys in the next lecture. Uh, I think I might actually upload this to YouTube as well. So if you guys like this video or slash lecture, uh, do hit the subscribe button down below and check out my course for the RTS course. This is what this lecture is for. Um, it's specifically for my RTS course, which is on my website. Uh, it might be on Udemy as well in the future, but we'll see. And I will see you all in the future. Bye-bye for now.